Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video we were able to find the current for the first mesh as a function of time and here's the equation. Also we found the derivative of that with respect to time but we hadn't quite figured out the coefficients yet. We still have to plug that in and notice that from the previous video that the current for the second mesh was four times the current of the first mesh plus 0.5 times the change of that current with respect to time. But notice that was for the transient equations and notice that means that this would not be added because that's part of the steady state portion of that equation. So the transient equation would be minus this. So we have to be careful when we add that. But first we need to figure out what those coefficients are. So a being minus 4 thirds times the minus 3. That means that di dt of the first mesh is equal to uh, the negative cancels out, the 3 cancels out, that gives me 4 e to the minus 3t and for b that would be plus 10 times e to the minus 10t. So here we now also have the proper equation. Again that's the transient equation, of course for the derivative it doesn't matter because the cousin drops off anyway. So for the transient equation i2t that's equal to 4 times i1. So 4 times this will give me minus 16 over 3 e to the minus 3t and a half, oh I'm not done yet, uh, 4 times this will give me minus 4 e to the minus 10t. So what I've done now is I've taken 4 times i, i being this equation. Of course I'm not going to multiply this because I'm dealing with just the transient equation only. Now plus half times this equation, so plus 0.5 times this gives me 2 e to the minus 3t and half times this gives me plus 5 e to the minus 10t. Now of course I need to combine those and I have a minus 16 over 3 and a plus 2 that would be plus 6 over 3 so I get i2 transient is equal to that would be a minus 10 over 3 e to the minus 3t and a minus 4 plus 5 that would be plus e to the minus 10t. Now all I have to do is just add the constant portion to that. So i2 as a function of time is equal to minus 10 thirds e to the minus 3t. There should be a 3 right here. There we go. And plus e to the minus 10t. And then remember that the steady state current for mesh 2 is the same as it is for mesh 1, which makes sense. We simply have to add plus 7 thirds to that. And we now have an equation that gives us the current for the second mesh as a function of time. All right, so now that we found the current for mesh 2, we now need to find the voltage across the resistor. And so the voltage across the resistor as a function of time will be equal to the voltage drop caused by current 1, so it would be V uh, of I1 minus the voltage rise of I2, so minus the voltage of I2. And how do we find that? Well, notice that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. So in this case, that would be the current, that would be I, uh, I1 times the resistance minus I2 times the resistance. Now in each case, the resistance is equal to 1 ohm, so that makes the whole thing easy. So it's essentially I1 minus I2. So this is equal to I1. So I1 is minus 4 thirds e to the minus 3t minus e to the minus 10t plus 7 over 3. And then we subtract from that, let me put a line here so we don't get confused, i2 which is a minus 10 over 3 e to the minus 3t a plus e to the minus 10t and plus 7 over 3. Alright, so when we take that and we subtract one from the other, notice the negative times the negative makes a positive, so we have 10 minus 4, which is 6 over 3 e to the minus 3t, and a minus 1 plus a 1, that would be minus 2 e to the minus 10t, and the 7 thirds minus 7 thirds drops out, so this becomes 2 e to the minus 3t minus 2 e to the minus 10t, and that would be the voltage across the resistor as a function of time on this circuit. So now we have current 1, current 2, and the voltage across the resistor. 
And that is how it's done. And it's correct. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>